Hello, this is Dr. Brian Thompson at Portland Psychotherapy. This is part two of my presentation on contextual behavioral exposure. If for somehow you missed part one, I would close this up and track this down because it's a direct continuation of it. This next series of slides are basic heuristics, rules of thumb. I placed held lightly at the end of the title there because none of these are hard and fast rules. These are things just to consider. First one here is Behaviorism 101. It's easier and more effective to reinforce alternative behaviors in session. It also gives you the opportunity to probe more deeply. Although out-of-session exposure is extremely important when avoidance behaviors are out of session, you have to rely more on self-report and from less immediate experience. And so, when beginning, particularly in the beginning of exposure, it can be really useful to try to evoke it in session and perhaps then assign in vivo exercises. Additionally, exposure is a collaborative process between the therapist and client. And it's important, but it's also important for the, the client to structure it with the, or the therapist to structure it with the client's input. The structure helps make exposure feel safe for the client. The two should agree on targets, and targets should be tied to values. It's not about what the client can do or, or, or about necessarily creating a, you can begin by creating a hierarchy, but any exercise should be specifically tied to a particular valued goal of the client. That goal then may, may be broken down into several smaller exposure exercises and they need not be done sequentially. But from an ACT perspective, it's important that it be meaningful. Additionally, the length of exposure in a, from a contextual behavioral perspective can be negotiated. This is different from a habituation model, uh, which is common in, in certain CBT protocols, where the emphasis is on engaging in exposure until the client's distress or anxiety goes down. Here it's more about psychological flexibility. If a client is reluctant in the beginning, you might start small and move up, but it really doesn't matter from an ACT perspective whether a client's distress goes down during the exposure exercise. Now, for out of session or in vivo exercises, it's really important to structure this up front to specify what, when, where, for how long. That way, the client can know right away whether they've done the exposure or not. And to return to the, the notion of the importance of tying this to values and goals, as a client begins to engage in exposure and moves through treatment, there may be additional values clarification and the target of exposure may change over time. It's, again, this is a collaborative process and the client may come in and say, initially I thought this was important, but really I'd like to put my energies here. It would be important to, to evaluate whether that's a, a function of values clarification or whether it's more of an avoidance move. But from an ACT perspective, the, the object of exposure uh, may, be, uh, may change as the, the client becomes uh, more in contact with what's important to them. The more exposure can be designed to generalize across situations, the more impact it will have for the client. As much as possible in vivo exercises should be naturalistic and, and tied to the client's environment 
And when working with thoughts and emotions, I find it helpful to give clients the acceptance of thoughts and feelings exercise from the Forsyth in Eifert. Actually, the therapist manual is Eifert and Forsyth, and the corresponding self-help workbook is Forsyth and Eifert. But the exercise allows people to practice among any thoughts and emotions and bodily sensations that show up. And so that that can be useful in, in helping the skill to generalize across a number of private events. Some clients may even begin to conduct their own exposure exercises spontaneously, even if they aren't following through with agreed upon exposure exercises. And lastly, it's important to note and anticipate potential barriers that may come up. And barriers are, are another opportunity to simply notice what thoughts, feelings, and bodily sensations come up as one begins to engage in uh, exposure exercises. For this slide, it, it's important to, to capitalize on what strengths and abilities a, the client already has. For example, some clients are great at tacting, and that's just a geeky behaviors term for putting name or labels to their experience. What this means is some clients are, are excellent at being able to discriminate among thoughts and bodily sensations. The problem comes is that they tend to avoid what they discriminate. Additionally, others are great at commi committed action, but they tend to colloquially, speak, colloquially speaking white knuckle it. So if you assign something to it, someone will do it, but the important thing is the, how they do it to, in that, that it may be useful to, to train up willingness in that respect, to be with an experience and to, to actually open oneself up to it rather than grit their teeth and move their way through it. And additionally, others have strong values, particularly people with with families or other things that are really important to them. It's just a matter of helping them contact that and then coming up with exercises to help them kind of live their lives in, in greater accordance with those values. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, it's important to reinforce spontaneous efforts. I often have clients who look for opportunities in their environment of things that they typically avoid and they, they will intentionally put themselves in exposure situations. And lastly, it's important to be flexible. There aren't really, again, these are rules of thumb held lightly. And I think this is one thing that distinguishes exposure from a functional contextual perspective. We're interested in moving processes here, and we're not invested in techniques particularly. Someone is willing to spend 30 seconds engaged in exposure. That's 30 seconds that they were engaged in a behavior that's alternative to avoidance. So 30 seconds of exposure is certainly better than no exposure. And as I noted in a previous slide, it's important to tweak exercises as values clarify. Since habituation is not in, is important, it's not really about the repetition here, but of learning to engage in behaviors or actions in accordance with one's values without getting stuck or without moving away from those. And those may shift over time. It can be useful to ask repeatedly, uh, across sessions you know, do we feel do you feel like we're moving towards what's important to you because that may change over time uh, this can be a particularly important question to ask if the client is not engaging in the exposure exercises that it, it that might be a sign that they are not as tied to values as maybe may be useful so to add a little bit more juice there so it may be important important to, to have another conversation about what the, what the client really wants to move towards. The last thing to consider is how do you know when to end exposure? 
And again, since we're not drawing from a habituation model, we don't have subjective units of distress as a guide. And I don't really have a clean answer for that. I think the thing to consider is when a, one is consistency, consistency is a client able to, to engage in the exposure exercises? Are they beginning to engage in more activities that are in, in accordance with what's important to them? And the last part is, do they feel that they can continue that without the structure of exposure? And I think many clients have a, if not all clients, have a sense of, okay, I feel like I'm moving again and I feel like I can continue, continue on uh, without having to engage in, in specific exercises. And it, this may be a time to discontinue exposure or maybe a time to discontinue treatment or there may you may uh, have a session a month uh, from that point in order to 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 assess how how someone is is carrying on. So again, going back to the the previous slide, it's important to be flexible and just to really look at valued living. This is the end of contextual behavioral exposure. Uh, hopefully this is uh, of some help to you. Again, this is uh, Dr. Brian Thompson at Portland Psychotherapy.